Hi there, my name is Stephanie Eddy and I'm a Partner Account Manager for the Azure Circle program at Microsoft. I'd like to thank you for taking time to join us today for how to spin up a VM in 10 minutes. Today's presenter will be the Azure Circle's very own Partner Technology Advisor, Shane Koenig. So with that, I'll turn it over to Shane. Thank you, Stephanie, and I welcome everyone as well. And as she stated, I am a national PTA Partner Technology Advisor specializing in infrastructure as a service on Windows Azure. So with that, uh, we will get started. And the first thing that you will see is the portal. I've clicked on all items, and you can see all the items that I've created in my Azure account at this point. So to create a new machine, we'll click New. We go to Compute, Virtual Machine, and From Gallery. Now, when we get into the gallery view, you will notice a few things. Uh, first off, there are some pre-designed templates for Windows Server 2012, Windows Server 2008 R2, as well as three versions of SQL Server, three versions of BizTalk, and a SharePoint trial, and some Linux options, as well as two templates I created myself. For our demo today, we are going to use the Windows Server 2012 Data Center Edition template. At the top of the window, there are different versions and different release dates. Those are Win Microsoft patch dates, and so you can pick any one of those, whichever one you feel would best suit your needs and be the most likely to work with your application that you're attempting to install. Next, we need a, a name for our machine. In this case, I'm going to just use a test name. I'm going to leave it on small but be aware that there are other options, uh, like the very newly created A6 and A7 options, which have a lot more memory. We need to put in a username that we can use to log into the machines. So for this, I'm just going to use admin MS. And we need to set up a password. And the password, of course, has to meet the password rules. Now, it comes to the DNS name. This name has to be unique, and Microsoft will do a lookup to make sure that it is a unique name. And the green check mark tells us that it is OK. Under the storage account, I'm going to use an automatically generated one. That's the default option. And down in region uh, slash affinity groups, you will actually see your affinity groups, regions, and if you have virtual networks, there will be a virtual network. You will see in here that I have a, one affinity group, US West DC. Affinity groups allow you to actually attach different resources to your machine when you create it. Uh, if you just pick a region, it's going to put you in a data center in that region. For the course of this demo, we'll use West US. Now, the availability set is another option. Uh, if you want to have multiple machines on the same virtual network or tied together, you would actually create an availability set. And one of the new features um, that came out when Azure GA'd uh, just a couple of weeks ago was the enable PowerShell remoting. So that, if you enable that, it allows PowerShell to be able to attach to your machines. So with that, I'll hit the check mark, and it will start creating the machine. The first thing you'll notice when we do that is that there are three green bars down here moving. That actually tells you your progress. And if you click on Details, it will tell you exactly where we're at. There's two phases, actually, to the machine creation. The first phase cordons off the resources and assigns them only to your machine. In the next phase, the machine is actually rebooted, and then the operating system and all the patches are actually applied at that point in time. There are a few things um, within the portal to be aware of also when creating a virtual machine. The first thing is under network. 
you'll notice I have no virtual networks created right now. But if you want to assign a machine to a virtual network, you need to make sure that the virtual network is created first. That is very important uh, because once you've created the machine, you cannot reassign it to a different virtual network or to a, you know, if you didn't assign it to one in the first place, you still can't assign it to another one at that point. The machine is coded to that IP address or that network that it was created on. At some point, I do believe they will fix that, but uh, there is no date at this point in time. The other important thing to note about the virtual network is that that is where you go to actually set up your one-to-many uh, VPN situation where you can have a workstation actually VPN into your Azure subscription. That's also where you go to set up your site-to-site -site VPN. To set up the site-to-site -site VPN, you actually have to have the public IP address of your VPN router, and you also have to have the public key um, you know, that's encrypted that you design inside of your VPN solution. Once you have those entered into the Azure console in your virtual network, you will actually be able to automatically connect that VPN and set up your hybrid data center environment. I get a lot of questions about what it takes to actually virtualize a machine and upload it to Azure and make sure that you can get it to work. Uh, that is very possible. You can create a machine in Virtual Machine Manager. You can also use P2V to create the machine. And by the machine, I mean the actual virtual hard drive. And you can then copy the hard drive up. Um, there are two considerations for this process, however, uh, one of which is that the machine you create has to have fixed disks. As you can imagine, with thousands of machines in our data centers, if they were all set to dynamic disks and they all were expanding constantly, there is the possibility that we could run out of disk space, and it's a lot harder to manage and a lot harder to plan for growth. So fixed disks are a requirement, and every Azure virtual machine you create will have a fixed disk. The second part of that is that when you upload the VHD file, it has to actually be uploaded as a page blob. Uh, in blob storage, there are two options, block and blob. If you upload it as a block blob, you will not be able to create a virtual machine image from it. So just something for you to be aware of that you have to upload it as a page blob. As you can see, uh, under creating virtual machine down here at the bottom, it successfully created the machine, it's, it rebooted, and now it's provisioning the virtual machine and installing the operating system. If we go back and check on the status, we'll see that it's running. One other question that I get quite often as well is in regards to adding disks to the virtual machines, you know, how much work is it and uh, what's entailed? So if you actually go into virtual machines and you click on your virtual machine, and go into the dashboard, you will actually see an option at the bottom where you can attach a disk. Right down here, you can actually go in. Um, right now, it's grayed out because of the fact that the machine is still in the process of being created. And you can actually add a disk in here. Now our status says the machine was successfully created. And we go back and check, and it is running, and it is created. And at this point now, I could attach a new disk to that machine. Well, that actually concludes our demo for today. And thank you very much, Stephanie, for that great introduction. I hope you all enjoyed the demo. And I look forward to providing you with more demos in the future.